But when you're doing this watch list tonight, make sure the names that you're watching are above supply, just like the NASDAQ 100. So if you look at names, right, look at names like Microsoft, right? All it needs to do is reclaim. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing okay. So let, let's kind of rewind, right? Uh, going back to last week, uh, Turkey, right? The Turkey week uh, where a lot of people were off. Um, nobody was pretty much there to defend stock prices. And we had this new uh, variant, right? The, the Omicron. I, I know I'm butchering the name, but we had this variant and the market pretty much sold off pretty aggressively. And once we got to uh, Monday session, if you guys remember, uh, the queues basically dipped under the 50 day moving average. And just like in any really good market or, or organic market, that dip was bought and we reclaimed the 50 day moving average. And the one message that I kept on reiterating, if you got to kind of go back to um, the weekend update was don't sensationalize what you just saw, right? This thousand point decline of the Dow, you know, this humongous move Dow, uh, down in the NASDAQ 100, all it did was back test the, the breakout of the original 50 day moving average on October the 18th. And that's exactly where we were. And yesterday we put in a higher low off the previous Friday's uh, low. Now, granted, if you watched last night's video, by no stretch of the imagination, could you even fathom uh, that the market was going to put in a really incredible move today? If you told me yesterday uh, that the Dow was going to be up tremendous and the Nasdaq was going to be up about 500 points, I'd be like, well, well why? What would be the reason? That did we end COVID? But that's exactly what happened. And no, no, we didn't end COVID, but we, we're starting to get more used to uh, on the news, on all these variants. If you guys remember, kind of going back, the Delta variant came, it shook the markets, it rattled the markets, and then slowly but surely we started phasing out because we realized, well, this is just another strain, another variant, and nothing is getting worse. Nothing's getting better, but nothing's getting worse. And the market embraced that and we kind of moved forward, right? And this new Omar, uh, Omicron, whatever the hell it's called, uh, variant came in and people got spooked again. And then people slowly but surely, and the market got slowly but surely, started giving us clues that people weren't dying from this, or at least we, we're, we're not sure that people were dying this. And this is a very mild strain, transmittable, yes, but people are not getting as sick as first deemed and first worst case scenario. And the market really embraced that news. So when I woke up this morning, you know, again, based on last night's video, yeah, I'd like some names. I, I, I thought they were good. You know, I'd like some names to the upside. By no stretch of the imagination that I think today was going to happen. Um, I think a lot of people got uh, caught off guard just by surprise uh, how aggressive the move was. But this is another prime example of the market digesting bad news. And this is exactly how we've been digesting variants, plagues, and everything else in between that the market has given us or thrown at us uh, since the March 2020 lows. The cool thing about what today did, and again, granted, a lot of people uh, weren't full full exposure overnight because there was no reason to. Again, yesterday we talked about it. The market didn't even take out the previous day's channel. And so I, I thought going into today, you know, maybe we'll get some value, but it's going to take a little bit of time for the markets to start reclaiming the five day moving average, uh, the 20 day moving average, the 10 day moving average. And lo and behold, the market gods did the heavy legwork for us today because not only did we reclaim short term uh, short term supply, we closed above the 10 day moving average, which is awesome, which is exactly what you wanted to do. So basically what it would have taken a full week, week and a half worth of buying, selling, buying, selling, and the whole chop factor and everything in between, we got it done today. Okay, whether you participate in this market or didn't participate in the market, that's kind of what we are. And that's where the, the scoreboard is. Now, again, you can turn around and say, well, the volume was lighter. It doesn't matter. Okay, stop using volume as an excuse for the scoreboard. It's irrelevant. We're over the 10-day moving average. And, and now it looked 
pretty dim, pretty gloomy uh, going into the start of this week based on the small dead cat bounce we saw yesterday. Now it's opening up, or at least the possibilities are opening up on a lot of big tech names to actually rally into the end of the year. And that's the most important part. And yeah, you're still going to find a bunch of names that are underneath supply and still, and they didn't kind of mirror what the market did today but you're still going to find a lot of names that did. And those names are the market leaders, the names like an Amazon, the names like an Apple continuing uh, its run, a name like Microsoft. Again, this is what you're looking for. If you, you're looking for uh, airspace, right? You're looking for, for any chart tonight that's going to mirror what you're seeing in the NASDAQ 100. If you believe in the theory that stocks trade from supply to supply, well, here's the NASDAQ 100 reclaiming supply. The next supply zone is all the way up here. Is it possible we can have uh, a res day tomorrow, kind of an inside day of today's rally? Absolutely, but the cool part about even if we have a res day tomorrow and we don't follow through, at least, and the, and the, the sellers demonstrated to us towards the end of the day that they held the rally, so they're very comfortable at these levels. So even if an Amazon rest today or an, or an NVIDIA rest today or an Apple and has some news after the close, uh, ramping up some production, maybe that go, goes a little bit higher, but the point is even if the, those stocks don't progress tomorrow and kind of rest today at least we're getting a pretty good aggressive signal that possibilities are still risk on santa claus might be back and we could actually rally uh towards the end of the year so when you're doing your uh watch list tonight right and i'm, I'm gonna have to cut this a little bit short my son has a basketball game but when you're doing this watch list, list tonight make sure the names that you're watching are above supply just like the nasdaq 100 so if you look at names right look at names like microsoft right all it needs to do is reclaim uh, today's action look at names like amazon okay you know had big big moves first close above the 10-day moving average above the 20 all it needs to do is reclaim today's channel to move even though tesla is not in anywhere that you'd want to see it above airspace at least here because tesla trades in such a big range at least today we tested the five-day moving average and if everybody watching this video kind of knows the five-day moving average at least for me is the shorter term, shortest term sentiment. So if the bulls can confirm today's price action on Tesla, by no means do I think it's gonna to go to 1168 tomorrow, but hey, if this thing confirms, maybe it gets into the mid 1170s, maybe 1180, that's the 10 day moving average. If we go materialistically uniformed uh, into the next supply zone, even a name like RBLX that had a really, really big run uh, came in with everything else, you know, like the whole uh, tech wreck growth story that got murdered in the last week or so. This thing is also, you know, it's just one or two days away of reclaiming the 10 day moving average to, to wake up. So try not to get creative, right? Don't look at anything that didn't rally today or is still sitting underneath supply. Look for the names that had big, big moves uh, prior to the Thanksgiving week sell off. Look for names that don't have supply on top of them because, again, what you need to rally are names that are clearing out airspace. So let me give you guys a couple more. Again, you, it, they're not hiding, right? Look at NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA is very close to busting out. Look at Netflix, right? Very, very close to taking out this channel and moving right back uh, into the higher tier supplies. So you don't have to get creative today. The only thing you have to do is look for stocks that have a channel to go from supply to supply. And if there is continuation tomorrow, those are the names you want to, you know, you want to be long. You want to be long the contenders. You don't want to be long the pretenders. You want to be long the stocks that hedge fund managers or index managers are going to try to paint the tape or uh, what's the word I'm looking for? What's that word? Uh, window, window tape, right? What was it called? Window... Um Painting windows, whatever the hell it's called. Can't remember, somebody long day. Can't remember the name. But the most important part, guys, look for value, look for former runners, and look for airspace. Guys, have a great night. Sorry to cut this short, but again, my wife has already texted me screaming I have to go. Guys, have a great night. God bless. Hopefully, we can get a nice, uh, calm, maybe even a light volume uh, red open. So once we catch some of these moves right to green, they start attacking today's channels. Guys, have a great night, and I will see you all tomorrow. Take